Hi, and welcome back to The Dip. I'm your host, Shannon. I'm joined today again by with Caitlin, and uh, we're going to talk about a, a new show that has uh, premiered uh, last week. Very Moon Knight. Nice. Moon Knight. What, do you, what did you think about it? I was very happy with the first episode. I was very happy um, and pleasantly surprised because I'm someone who's watched all of the Marvel movies, so I know that part of the cinematic universe. I've watched not much of the other shows, and I have not read the comics. So all of my Marvel knowledge is based plainly on the movies. So coming okay. from that side of it, I'm very happy with it. Awesome. And I very much enjoyed it. Awesome. I know a little bit more about Marvel, but I know absolutely nothing about Moon Knight. And I kind <laughs> of feel bad about that because as far as Marvel is concerned, mm -hmm. like for me, X-Men, that, that, that's the brand that I'm most familiar with. I grew up on X-Men comic books. Mm -hmm. I grew up on the X-Men cartoon series. Mm -hmm. that, that was my bread and butter. And then Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Moon Knight, I had no idea <laughs> no he even existed until about a year ago. I mean, same, because I didn't know until they announced it. And I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Sounds cool, though. And then yeah. they were like, Oscar Isaac's going to be Moon Knight. I was like, I'm definitely going to watch it. Because and then that I, trailer dropped. I know. Ago. Kind of horror. <laughs> kind of cool. Kind of fun. And I was I was surprised because the first episode as spoiler free as we can <laughs> was not much horror I was expecting a little more of this like kind of thriller vibe that the trailers brought mm -hmm. and we didn't get much of it instead we got a lot of Oscar Isaac which I'm not complaining about because I love him and I love this character I think it's very it's very interesting it is very interesting I would argue there's some thriller aspects too. oh yeah there are uh, definitely some and then there were some, I wouldn't say that they were horror, but there were some Yeah, I, I misspoke images. saying horror. I meant more thriller. <laughs> but also I get scared at like, you know, simple things. Yeah. So because there, there, there are some scenes where it's, you know, you don't know if it's a hallucination or if, he's right. at, if it's actually happening. Right. You know, or even the whole thing is a hallucination. Is, is it all in his head? Or right, like really what's happening? real, what's not, which I really do enjoy that mm -hmm. kind of like back and forth. Like what? are we to believe in what is yep. fake? That's and a I, fun thing. It, it kind of plays into that that in-between state you you get into sometimes mm -hmm. between being awake and, and dreaming. Mm -hmm. And when you're like aware, but you're not sure if you're still in the dream or not. Right. And that's what that was the kind of feeling I was getting watching it. And I enjoyed the episode mm -hmm. immensely as well. I think it's, uh, I think it was really cool. I loved Ethan Hawke. Mm -hmm. I loved Oscar Isaac. Uh, I, I I thought everything was great. And Ethan uh, Hawke's character was creepy. He was creepy. That opening scene again. I'm not telling. I'm not gonna say what it is. Yeah. But it set me <laughs> way. I was like, oh, I. Oh, I watched. I watched it God. with uh, two of my friends, and we were just like, you see, what is he? Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. no. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little. A little cringy at first. Cringe in the good way. Right, it's not a bad like, cringe at all. Not a bad cringe. It's just cringe like a, is in oh, like... Oh, God, I can't believe this is happening. Physical pain. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I was watching with my dad, and he was like, I think he's going to... And I was like, no. And then and I was like, oh, he definitely <laughs> he did that. Oh, my God, it was wild. And I really... I like... Not spoiler, because it happened in the trailer. I like this two-personality thing. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how it happens. I'm interested to see how it works. Yeah. I'm interested to see when it happens. Like, what are the rules mm -hmm. of this personality, I guess? Like, you know, I'm I'm so curious. I'm yeah. so curious. Because we did not get a, a whole lot of information in the first episode. But that's what makes me want to come back, right? Yeah, we got a lot of great introductions to possible, uh, like, mysteries. Mm -hmm. especially like his past and all of that. Mm -hmm. What I really dig is the uh, Egyptian mythology. I was just going to bring that up as well. I absolutely love it. I mean, so fun. You know, I loved Egyptian mythology ever since I was a little kid. Same. And the fact that they're, they're merging this into not just, you know, into the Marvel universe. And then, so now my head is spinning, like thinking, well, how is this going to, how can this work in like, you know, like, 
is there going to be a Doctor Strange connection? Right. You know, like now if we're talking connect? about Egyptian gods and mm-hmm. goddesses and monsters and, you know, and then we've, we, we've got all these other uh, aliens or deities and mm-hmm. stuff that, or aliens that, you know, like Thor, like right. you have the Norse gods. And then also in the comics, you also have Greek gods too. Yeah, so like in have... the end of um, Eternals, Eros came in. Mm-hmm. And that's a Greek and Roman god, I think. Mm-hmm. And so I like, I love mythology. Uh, so much fun. Rick Reardon, Percy <laughs> Jackson was my jam when I was younger. <laughs> and still is. Still mythology is one of my favorite things. And so when they get like these gods, I'm always interested to see how, like what the spin is. Mm-hmm. Because there's always, I mean, it's not going to be the exact same as the mythology. Oh, yeah. And so I'm interested to see what they do with these gods and see what they do with these types of with these myths, I guess. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what happens with, uh, you know, I, I want to, I mean, Anubis is one of, is one of my favorites. Like, so to see so like fun. Anubis and Osiris and Horus and Ra, uh-huh. I think that's going to be pretty cool. I think it's, I, I hope they do something cool because as of now, they're not like actual characters. So mm-hmm. I wonder if they will become characters and I wonder if they'll be good or bad. Like, cause we have two gods already, mm-hmm. Thor and Loki. Yeah. Thor's good. Loki's iffy. <laughs> and then we have arrows who might be good, might be bad. Yeah. So will we get more gods? Will they be good or bad? How is it going to connect? Yeah. I'm so curious. So many we'll, questions. We'll, we'll see. And I'm yeah. so excited for exactly. the rest of the season. I am very excited as well. Isn't it going to be short though? I think it's only six episodes. Which is not long enough. No, it's not. It's so sad. Unfortunately. <sighs> That's okay. Six but, is uh, plenty. I think uh, we, we, we've talked enough about... Moon Knight, and I think it's time to start talking about Moonlight, as in Moonlighting, as Jack and Charlie will be talking to us about Bruce Willis. Take it away, guys. Hey, how are you, everyone? Charlie and Jack. Uh, Two similarly looking chaps here on the dip. Absolutely. How you doing, Jack? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. I'm here to talk about... uh, Big entertainment news, Bruce Willis is retiring due to aphasia, which is, if you don't know for the folks at home, a language disorder that uh, hinders one's ability to communicate. And that doesn't really work well with, you know, acting. So Bruce Willis is taking his retirement, which I can completely understand as a medical retirement and stuff like that. But let's talk a bit about, you know, some of our favorite Bruce Willis moments throughout, uh, throughout cinematography and history. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm excited. I'm a fan of a uh, few of his movies, and mm-hmm. um, I mean, he's a legend. Let's... And it's uh, just really tragic he's going through what he's going through, and I, know. I hope the best for him. Um, but I think he's left um, a strong track record. An indelible movies. mark on cinematic history, I'll say. Jersey Boy, by, by birth, has really made a true impact on our society. <laughs> I, I haven't seen. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm more familiar with um, well, Die Hard. Of Die Hard, obviously, of course. Uh, best Christmas movie. Um, Everyone's, but like, but it's so basic to say that. But it's fun. It, to it say is, that. but it, it's it, a fun it's, poking, fun, it's a fun in, poking. inside. Joke. It's it's sort of like um, it's the Happy Christmas of, of movies. Mary Chrysler. Mary Chrysler. Some may say to you, yes. my friend. Very, yes, it's a very basic okay. thing oh, yeah. to say. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I, it's it like still put, grinds people's it's like gears, putting, so I like to say it's It's the equivalent movie. of putting uh, Jordan Belfort posters in your room. <laughs> yes. It's and funny. Thinking you're cool. But, and thinking you're cool, or uh, getting really into Tarantino movies. Yes. Which, Bruce Willis starred in, did a great job in Pulp Fiction. That is a great movie. There's a great transition, is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> well played. Um, Pulp Fiction, yeah, it's definitely one of those. I mean, it's a great movie. So it's it one of the like quintessential it's one film of the, bro It's movies. one of the uh, film bro, and this is something that we can really uh, transition on. Uh, but film bros soil it for everyone. Yeah, they really do. They are the double IPAs of people. You know, very bitter. Very and, bitter. Um, I love a good double IPA, but like, are you really gonna bring one to a cookout and casually drink three of them? Yeah, no. I just want to sit back and watch. Sit back. Just chill out. Chill tough. Um, Rousing conversation. <laughs> Bruce Bruce Willis is great in that movie. Oh yeah, back to back. To Bruce, Bruce Willis, is, you know, he he's a it's really an good iconic guy. Role, another iconic. Oh yeah, role and Bruce Willis, unlike many people in Hollywood, started out as a regular dude. 
Yeah. Became an actor. I think that's like part of the appeal of Bruce Willis. He's an everyman. Yeah. Especially right down to his hair. Oh, yeah. You know? He's like one of the few like bald actors no. that like really pulls it off. Like mm. him and like Jason Statham. The, see, Jason Statham is him and Bruce Willis. They're like not, you know, they allow themselves to have a little bit of the side hair, mm-hmm. which I think is really important if you're balding. You know, you can go Mr. Clean or Dwayne Johnson way of doing it, but sometimes it's a power move to leave a bit of hair on the side. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the. Well, they all used to have hair back in the day. You mentioned The Rock, though. Of course. Like, when in his wrestling days, he had, like, a nice little, like... <laughs> his hairline right in the back. <laughs> he had a little more hair on his head, but... Um, he also... I mean, he rocks the of Mr. Course. Clean look. Of course, but I feel like we are getting deeply away from Aphasia. Yes. Yes, let's yeah. circle back. So, Aphasia um, is, for people who don't know, really kind of inhibits uh, one's ability to communicate effectively... So Bruce Willis took the took the decision and said, "I'm done because it's a medical condition, just like any other." Um, but I believe Sharon Stone also has aphasia. Yeah, I didn't find that. Yeah, out I just found that out today. But um, a lot of the ways you can get it is through a brain injury, like a concussion, stuff like that, or a stroke. So I don't know how it happens, man. I mean, I, I'm sure he wants to keep his keep his personal life personal, personal and that's personal. that's how it is. And I respect him for that. So do I. Yeah. Um, Great career, and we're hoping for the best for Bruce Willis. And Bruce, years to come. We're rooting for you. Stay strong. <laughs>